For this Sunday shipwreck video, I have decided to do something a bit different. I am currently working on researching the wrecks of Hiei and Kirishima for a future video, as well as the Java Sea wrecks, such as they are. However, in that process, I decided I could do a different kind of video for this weekend. Instead of looking at a wreck that has been found, let's take a look at a wreck that hasn't been found. This is not the usual shipwreck video by any stretch, but in this specific case, it's one I think worthy of a video. And thus, we have this. A look at the final member of the Congo class, the nameship herself. Congo's wreck is an interesting one, because one can make some educated guesses based on how she sank, as well as the condition of her sisters off of Guadalcanal, which have both been located. I will use pictures of their wrecks later on, as examples of how Congo might look on the bottom. But at the same time, Congo is also a ship that we might never find at all, because she sank in shallow water in the Taiwan Strait. And when I say shallow water, I do very much mean shallow water. Which, if my comment section on these videos is any indication, I'm sure people can guess what I'm alluding to there. It's the combination of both of these things that led to this video being made, so let's get into it, starting with how Congo sank. That story begins soon after the end of the Battle of Leyte Gulf. The surviving capital ships, after retreating from the battle, arrived in Brunei on October 28, 1944. There they would remain, refueling and making repairs as needed, for the first half of November. Unfortunately for the Japanese, the Americans weren't going to give them a chance to rest and launch another attack. By November 16th of 1944, it had become too dangerous to stay there after an air raid. As such, most of the fleet, minus Haruna, set back off for Japan. This was a wise decision, all things being equal, but it would end up leading to Congo's doom. On November 21st, she was spotted by USS Sea Lion. This submarine, under the command of Eli Reich, had found the Japanese formation in the Taiwan Strait or the Formosa Strait, as it was known at the time. For a couple hours that night, Reich stalked the Japanese ships. He drew ever closer and set up an attack run, unable to pass up such a target. By 3 a.m. on the 21st, Sea Lion was in position. The submarine fired a volley of torpedoes at a distance of only 3,000 yards. First her six bow tubes, then three stern torpedoes, for a total of nine fish in all. Six at Congo, and three at Nagato. Of these, it is generally accepted that three hit their mark. Two slammed into Congo, while a third blew up the destroyer Urakaze. Two slammed into Congo, while a third blew up the destroyer Urakaze with no survivors. Though the crew of Sea Lion claimed three hits on the battleship. Regardless of exactly how many hit, the torpedoes proceeded to flood two of Congo's boiler rooms. She continued to limp along at about 16 knots, but with a 15 degree list to port. Congo would gradually slow, however, to 11 knots. At which point she was ordered to break off and make for Formosa, as it was recognized she wouldn't reach Japan. This was too late, however. While Sea Lion tried to set up another attack run, Congo's list increased to as much as 45 degrees, with the flooding getting out of control. As such, the Japanese began to abandon ship at around 5.18 a.m. when she lost power. They waited too long, as it would turn out. Not even ten minutes later, while her crew was frantically getting off the ship, a massive explosion rang out. This was likely her forward 14-inch magazines, which broke her back and sent Congo down quickly. She took over 1,200 men with her, including two admirals the 3rd Battleship Division's commander, Vice Admiral Suzuki, and her own captain, Rear Admiral Shimazaki. Ultimately, only 237 men were fished from the water by her escorting destroyers. That brings an end to the confirmed information on Congo sinking. From this point on, we do get into speculative territory, so consider that a warning if you're the type to hate speculation. Right, let's take a look at how her wreck could look on the bottom first. As said, Congo's forward magazines blew up as she sank. This is important because out of her three sisters, two of them have been found on the bottom, and their condition is enlightening, 
in regard to how Congo might look in her own right. The third sister, Haruna, was sunk in port and scrapped post-war. When it comes to the two off of Guadalcanal, however, both are in pieces. They each lost their bow section, which leaves them missing a fair chunk of their hull. Hiei may or may not have suffered a magazine explosion. Robert Lundgren notes that she was seen sinking by her stern, and her bow may have broken off, somewhat like how Titanic's stern broke when she sank. This is conjecture, though, because it is also possible she suffered a magazine explosion. Kirishima, on the other hand, shows clear signs of a massive internal explosion. Her hull is torn apart, with her side plating blown out. This is most likely the result of an explosion of her forward magazines, albeit one that happened after she was already flooded. This is important because it tells us that the condition of Kirishima would likely be mirrored to at least some extent on Congo. Exactly how much is an open question, because we don't know if the explosion on the name ship was as big as on her sister ship. Similarly, the fact that both Kirishima and Hiei rolled over as they sank is important. Congo was developing a terrible list before she blew up, so she almost certainly capsized as well, either on the surface or shortly after sinking. This could mean that she ended up on the bottom, upside down, but it could also be the case that she's on her side, because while she probably capsized like her sisters, Congo sank in far shallower water. A Congo-class ship was, roughly, 700 feet, 220 meters long. Congo sank in water that was only about 350 feet, 107 meters deep. Depending on how badly she broke, she might well have hit the bottom before completely turning over. As such, while her sister's capsizing is important, Congo might not be entirely overturned like they are. Which would be nice, since with the only two intact wrecks lying inverted, we have no way to see a turret or intact superstructure of a Congo-class ship. Though, I should note, it's not very likely, and she probably capsized just like her sisters. That being said, now is the time to move past what we can guess on Congo from her sister's wrecks. While one can safely assume her wreck would show similar damage to her sister's, the shallower water would likely lead to less overall preservation. The busy nature of the Taiwan Strait would also, quite possibly, mean that she was damaged by fishermen, as is often the case with shallower wrecks. So even if her wreck is still intact, it is probably in worse shape. Probably. Because this is the point where I know people will get angry, but it does need to be said. Hiei and Kirishima's wrecks are probably fairly safe from salvage. They're each about a kilometer down, with Hiei at around 900 meters, and Kirishima at around 1,200. Or 3,000 and 4,000 feet, respectively. At that depth, it becomes incredibly expensive to bring anything back up. Not impossible, but something that isn't easy or cheap to do. Congo, however, sank in only about 350 feet of water. This is important to note because wrecks like Exeter or Perth or Java sank in about 100 to 300 feet of water. Depending on the exact ship, of course. To use more pertinent examples, Prince of Wales and Repulse sank in about 200 feet of water. You can see where this is going, I'm pretty sure. Congo's wreck is in very shallow water, a bit deeper than most of the wrecks that have been torn up over the years, but not that much deeper. And just as importantly, she was sunk in one of the busiest shipping lanes on Earth, just 55 nautical miles, 102 kilometers, north of Keelung. This is not a good position for a wreck to be in, when it is very well known what happens to World War II shipwrecks in shallow water. Especially well-traveled shallow water. I'm not going to outright say she's been salvaged. No one knows for sure, other than anyone who might have torn her apart. However, with the combination of a shallow depth and her exact location, I'm of the opinion that it is entirely possible, if anyone goes looking for Congo, they'll only find scattered debris and an imprint on the seabed, just like what's left of Exeter. After all, you have a similar circumstance with the, admittedly far smaller, submarine HMS Poseidon. She sank in 130 feet of water, 20 miles north of Weihai. And Poseidon was salvaged all the way back in 1972 in secret. 
it remains entirely possible that the same happened to Congo, and no one knows about it, because no one has gone looking for her. I would be quite happy to be proven wrong here. I would love to see Kaladin, or someone else, go looking for her, and find Congo more or less intact, magazine explosion aside, on the bottom. I'm quite fond of the ship and her history, as the last foreign-built Japanese capital ship. But, all the same, I won't hold out much in the way of hope. Either of her being intact at all, or of how long she would stay intact if she were found, in more or less one piece. Her location and shallow depth do not paint a pretty picture. Still, as we reach the end of this video, I would be fully willing to make a follow-up if anything comes to light on her wreck, one way or another. Thank you for watching, remember to like, comment, and subscribe if you enjoy the content, and I'll see you in the next one.